In this video, I'll be sharing five of the absolute worst pieces of nutrition advice that I've ever heard a strength coach give to an athlete. Hi, my name is Tim DeLeo and welcome to my channel, Sport Nutrition Academy. As a licensed sport dietitian who spent over 10 years working in college athletics, I can tell you I've heard a lot of bad nutrition advice being given to athletes but these ones are some of the absolute worst. And the troubling part is, is that this information is coming from a source that the athletes often trust a lot, and that is their strength coach. Now, I'll preface this video by saying that I do have a lot of respect for strength and conditioning coaches, having been one myself many, many years ago. And many of them do actually have a strong background in nutrition and do provide some quality advice to their athletes. But those are not the strength coaches I'm talking about in this video. And I also want to hear from you. What is the worst piece of nutrition advice that you've ever been given? Let me know in the comments below. So leave a like if you enjoyed this video and let's dive into the five pieces of terrible nutrition advice and why you as an athlete should absolutely not follow this advice. So first up is an absolute classic piece of terrible nutrition advice and it's often given to athletes who are looking to gain weight or build muscle and that is you just have to eat more. Now this is absolutely useless advice for a few reasons. The advice just eat more really provides no direction to the athlete and often the athlete is going to have follow-up questions like well, how much more should I eat? It's almost like telling an athlete if they wanna get stronger to just lift more, really not helpful. This type of advice also shows a lack of consideration for the quality and type of nutrition being added in order to help this athlete gain weight. Just eating more could mean go eat an entire pizza, go to McDonald's and get you know two Big Macs and a large fry. So sure, an athlete will definitely gain weight you know, consuming those high calorie dense foods, but that's gonna put them at risk for gaining a lot of extra body fat, which is certainly not gonna help their health or their performance on the field. So terrible piece of advice number two, and I heard this a few times when I was working with a football program down in Texas, an uh, athlete came up and approached the strength coach and said, hey, you know, I'm looking to lose some weight, you know, what should I do? And the strength coach said, you know, in order to lose weight, you just have to cut out bread. Now, this was popular advice back then. It was around 2016, 2017, because carbs were, you know, very demonized and continue to be demonized uh, to this day. But ultimately, that advice is extremely flawed. This advice is flawed because we're making the assumption that the reason for weight gain is coming from carbs, which is not inherently true, and that one singular food is the problem for this individual and why they can't lose weight. Singular foods do not result in weight gain or prevent weight loss. That's just not how it works. And then number three, when I was actually able to talk with this athlete, I found out that he really didn't consume a whole lot of bread to begin with. On occasion, he would have an English muffin or a breakfast sandwich in the morning, but that was really the only bread that he was consuming. So telling this individual to just completely cut out bread isn't going to make that much of a difference for him because he's not consuming that much bread to begin with. So this really isn't an individualized approach to help him lose weight. After I had a deeper conversation with him, we found that he was really snacking a lot in between meals because he was kind of under eating. And then on the weekends, was drinking a lot of alcohol and consuming a lot of extra calories through those liquids. We were able to make those few changes and it resulted in the weight loss and he didn't have to cut out the bread at all. Terrible advice number three is even more weight loss advice. And this occurred when I was working at the University of Colorado. An athlete who was trying to lose weight asked the strength coach what he could do. And the strength coach told him that if he stopped eating at eight o'clock, then he would start to lose weight. Because we all know that if you eat anything after 8 p.m., it immediately turns to fat, right? Wrong. Again, this is absolutely idiotic advice because the time that you eat throughout the day really doesn't make a whole lot of difference in terms of how much weight you gain or your inability to lose weight. You will lose weight if you're in a calorie deficit and that doesn't matter if you're consuming all of your calories you know, before noon or before eight o'clock or after eight o'clock or only between the hours of noon and 5 p.m literally doesn't matter about the timing. And for this particular athlete, you know, we played a lot of games pretty late at night. 
sometimes the games would get over at 9 30 10 o'clock at night so by following this type of strategy this athlete would not be eating a post-game meal um you know after they just played almost an entire game which is absolutely going to hurt them in terms of recovery for the next day and you know healing their body after the game and then similar to the athlete in terrible advice number two this particular athlete really didn't eat all that much after 8 p.m. He would usually eat dinner around 6 or 7 with the team, and then that was pretty much it. So, again, this advice isn't all that helpful for this particular athlete because the strength coach didn't actually take the time to talk through like what his normal day-to-day you know eating pattern was. Because had he known that this athlete really didn't eat anything after you know 7.30 at night, then he probably wouldn't have given him the, the advice to cut out, you know, or don't eat after 8 p.m. because that literally would not have done anything. There's nothing to eliminate after 7.30. He wouldn't have given him that advice because the athlete wasn't eating anything that needed to be, you know, cut out or restricted after 8 p.m. anyways. Terrible advice number four, and this one is absolutely hilarious to me, is an athlete was looking to gain weight, add some muscle to his frame in the off season, and the strength coach told this particular athlete to wake up at 2.30 every morning and drink a high calorie shake and then go back to bed. Again, because you as a waking athlete can definitely consume all of the calories that you need between the time that you wake up and the time that you go to bed. If you're having a hard time doing that, then you do not have a very good plan of action for your meals and snacks and the types of foods that you're incorporating to make sure that you get those calories in. And then we definitely don't want to be interrupting sleep because sleep is one of the most critical factors for recovery for athletes. And by disrupting your sleep cycle and waking up in the middle of the night just to drink a shake, you know, you're know you hurting yourself from a recovery standpoint the following day. So prioritize your sleep and have a good plan in place to get all of your meals and snacks and total calories in when you're awake. And then terrible piece of nutrition advice number five for this video is that taking a B12 shot, so a B12 vitamin shot, gives you a big boost of energy. Now again, that is stupid advice, dumb advice, misinformation, because that is not how B12 works in the body. B12 does help to provide your body energy by helping with the metabolism of protein, carbs, and fats but it is not a stimulant like caffeine that is gonna give you a sudden jolt of energy or stimulate you um, because that's just not what it does. So we had a strength coach when I was working with a particular football team who would go around at pregame meal to every single player and pump a shot of B12 vitamin into their cup because that was gonna give them a boost of energy that they were gonna need for the game. Again, one of the most idiotic things I've ever seen in my entire life. And for those of you who don't know, you get a lot of B12, definitely more than you would ever need in a day if you're consuming a lot of animal foods. So eggs, chicken, steak, you know, stuff like that. And which I can tell you, all of our players were definitely consuming enough of. And when you take high doses of B12, whether it's in a pill supplement, a liquid supplement, an IV, it doesn't really matter, and you're not deficient in that particular vitamin, then you're gonna be pissing all of that off. So the B12 shot, while great for optics and coaching staff seeing, oh wow, we're doing this and that's kind of cool, it wasn't doing jack shit. So if you feel like you need a boost before a game, make sure you're getting enough sleep the night before, make sure you're eating consistently throughout the day so you're fueled and have actual energy from food to use, and then maybe you know add in some caffeine there. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Have you ever been given advice like that? let me know in the comments. And like I said, I've heard a lot of garbage nutrition advice and misinformation being given to athletes. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss part two.